This is Smarter San Diego TV. Here is what they don't want you to know. Owning a home is the cornerstone of any good financial plan or retirement strategy. I mean, that's the real reason we buy real estate. You've got to be smarter if you want to be successful. That's what this show is for. It's going to blow your mind. You're going to share this with everyone you know. I guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. If you do nothing else in your lifetime to save for retirement other than own your home free and clear, you're going to be okay. And now, here's your host, Derek Evans. Welcome to Smarter San Diego TV. This is the place right here where you get smarter and it's all commercial free. Today's a very special day because we'll be showing you the other side of Smarter San Diego Studios as we kick things off with the real estate debate. Find out what's hot and what's not in San Diego real estate. Then we'll chat with Aisha Sunasia, a psychology professor who will help us explore the ego and its many pitfalls. Next, we'll talk with Ryan Garrity, Big Daddy himself. He'll tell us what's happening in Metro San Diego and what's up next for Big Daddy Radio. Then we'll speak with Dan McClellan, a sports reporter who promises a different take on the whole Chargers Stadium debacle. And finally, we chat with Michael Jacobo. He'll clue us in on what's happening in Encinitas. It's all coming up next right here on Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. All right, it's time for the very first real estate debate on TV. Let's go meet our panelists. Jeff, how you Hi. doing, man? Good, Good to have you here. Really appreciate it, Dale. Good to see you, Derek. Thanks, man. Thanks for being here. Erica, great to have you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Linda, Good to see you. thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. It's time. I'm Dale Entrican with Synergy One Lending and HomeLendingSanDiego.com. My name is Jeff Campbell. I work with the concierge real estate team. You can find us at SanDiegoHomeBuys.com. Hi, I'm Erica Bosian. I'm with Rising Realty of California. Hi, I'm Linda Klein with Whistle Realty. Welcome to the Real Estate Debate for television for the very first time. Thank you for joining us and thank you all for being here. Erica, Linda, Dale, Jeff, thank you guys for being here. Really Good to be here. It. Thank you. Dale, we've done the real estate debate a number of times before. Yep. All on the radio. Now we're on TV. The, the pressure's off. You don't have to judge this one. You can yeah. participate. Oh, that's a big. That's a big bonus. How does that feel today? It, it's a, it's a, a big relief, and that now I don't have to worry about my walk to the parking lot. About how many <laughs> agents are giving, giving me death stares? We have some great agents uh, in studio with us today. Should be a really good debate. Great topics too. Yeah, absolutely. Excited for it. Yeah, very much looking forward to it. Let's go ahead and jump right in with agree or disagree. All right, tell us whether you agree or disagree with the given statement and defend your position. Today's statement is. Buying a home is now easier because of websites like Zillow and Redfin. Jeff Campbell, you're up first. Zillow is fabulous at attracting traffic, but are they good at helping properties sell? When we look at the numbers, we see that Zillow has millions of unique visitors every month. When we compare that to how many people actually purchase a property, the numbers aren't even close. Some estimates show that perhaps only 3% of people that visit Zillow buy a property. Hmm. So what does that tell you? That tells you that most of the people that are going to Zillow aren't buying a property. Uh, additionally, I recently went on a listing appointment and one of the first things that I do is I look at all the aggregators online and I find out what their values are. And high and low from Zillow, Trulia and three others, there is an $80,000 spread so I think for, for me, bottom line, and hopefully for consumers, we need realtors now more than ever because of companies like Zillow. Mm. Because if you're not getting good data, you need a professional realtor to steer you through that $80,000 spread to give you the answer, what's my home really worth? Oh, I disagree. The issue that I have with Zillow, a couple of issues, or, or truly and some of those other sites too, is that the information is not accurate. Some of the properties that they have listed on there, whether it's rentals or for sale, they're not even they're not even for sale. They sold five years ago, three years ago. So then the prices that a potential buyer is looking at is from 2012. Well, the market is very different now. You're not gonna you're not getting anything for the 2012 prices nowadays. Right. Um, and and Zillow doesn't know if your property faces the dumpster or the ocean. <laughs> Zillow doesn't know if your house has marble floors that you can tiptoe on or laminate flooring. That's why you need to hire a realtor to yeah. decipher through the information. Let me ask you a question. Do you have marble floors? I do not have marble floors. If you did, would you tiptoe around on them? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Zillow? 
Uh, it, what they're saying is 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 really true because they with, with how many people are going to the site, we're getting a lot of misinformation. And on the lending side, we see it with values for people who come in when they're looking to refi, and they say, "Well, you know, my house is worth, you know, five hundred according to Zillow," and the reality is they don't know. They don't really you don't really know. They, they're grabbing gross estimates of properties because they're just grabbing comps of, of sales in the area, but they don't know if it really matches out with their property. Right. And so they're seeing homes that are, you know, facing the ocean versus the dumpster, <laughs> as Erica said. So, you know, they're, uh, you know, I, I, I see it as a good starting point. And I think that 3% number comes from the fact that a lot of people who use it own. Yeah. I think that's what, what they're just checking. And price. they yeah, want to know what their Zestimate is. Yeah. Absolutely. They're checking like the stock market, just ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Uh, Linda, tell me, do you agree or disagree? Is it now easier to buy a home because of websites like Zillow and Redfin? I don't think it's easier. What I do think is um, it's more educational. So if you look at Zillow's business plan and Trulia's business plan, it's very, it, you know, realtors think it's counterintuitive, however it's not. There was a time where this information about buying homes are was almost like a secret, but now buyers and sellers can actually go out there and do the research on their own. And I mean, the natural desire of good men is to know. So having websites like Zillow or Trulia really gives buyers and sellers the power to go out there and do the research. The, and with Zillow, the way that their business plan is structured is that they're working with brokers and they're working with real estate agents, whether or not we realize it or not. What they do is they're giving us tons of free advertisements. Nowadays, realtors can put their information, their listing, and now millions of people can see that. So now we're bringing in more, more almost valuable buyers and valuable sellers because they know what's out there. They know what their home is relatively worth and also, um, there's a lot of information on there that needs to be interpreted. And that's what real estate agents like us need to do. Is there a danger in that though? I mean, if you think about the WebMD model, for example, mm -hmm. uh, WebMD has got a lot of people self-diagnosing, you know, going to their doctors and saying, oh, I think I've got rheumatoid thyroid arthritis or whatever, you know. Um, so is too much information sometimes uh, troublesome? for people out there. It's not if it's the right information. It's not if it's the good information, but therein lies the question. How do we know if it is good information? Lots of information is important. Who's heard of, if it's on the internet, it must be true. Right. <clears throat> and then, uh, so people go to what they feel is a trusted site, get information, and what happens is if the information is sort of correct and somewhat right, what that really means is it's not completely right. And that's where I think a realtor is going to help you uh, utilize the, w the web as a starting point, but it's not an ending point. Gotcha. Your realtor is the ending point. I advertise on Zillow and Trulia. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a hater of, of those sites. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like as, as a realtor, you know, it's, all, it's about exposure and, and getting yourself out there to, to the public to help them decipher the information that's on there. Um, the, just to kind of talk about what you were saying too, um, about the um, free advertising for, for realtors, it's, it's not, we have to pay for it. And, um, and that's the, the issue that I have with Zillow is that I'm, I'm, I'm spending money uh, on, these, on their websites for information that's not even accurate. You know, they lost their contract with, with IDX. It's not even linked up to the MLS anymore. So that's where the information that's going out there to the public, it's where is it even coming from? It's not even accurate because it's not even connected to the MLS anymore. So that's why you have all the misinformation. So and I can speak to that uh, personally. Just in the past seven days, we went to look at a property that was for sale. Uh, I, I found it on a different website went to Zillow to see if there were more pictures or historical data there. And Zillow said the property was off the market. This well, it was sometimes clearly it's not sale. correct. There are 65,000 uh, premier Zillow agents right now. By the way, I just quit. I, I was on it too. But I had to try it because you can't be haters, right? You, you have to give it a go. And it was incongruent for me 
to uh, uh, pay for something that I was talking to other people about saying it's not the right thing I get it I was getting leads and that's why realtors want to be there you know expose me everywhere it's all about exposure but it really it's not it's about proper exposure it's it's not a shotgun it's it's about targeting your your message and your 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 marketing for yeah. me well when I was talking about you know free advertising I didn't mean necessarily the realtors but I was talking about putting the listing on there which right. you can do that for free and as far as estimates are concerned I know that everybody will call um, I have a lot of clients that will call me about estimates even as we're putting offers in but once again there's information and it's our job to interpret it. You can go on Zillow, you can go on Trulia and Redfin. However, when it comes time and it, when it comes down to it and the time that you need to buy and sell, you're gonna go to a professional because they do it every day, they do it day in, day out. Great stuff, all right, well there it is for the, the insight on Zillow and the scoop on what you need to do if you're uh, poking around on that website. You're probably not going to find accurate information, unfortunately, but you know where to get the accurate information from these professionals right here in the studio with us. Stick around for hostility versus the host. As I take on the panel, it's me versus them. Coming up next. All right, it's time for Hostility versus the Host. This is the segment where our contestants have the chance to attack me and attempt to defy my grievance with the world of real estate. Today's statement is prices in San Diego County are currently too high for anyone sensible to make an investment in real estate. That said, I think prices will go higher in the future, but right now, it's a great time to be a seller, not such a great time to be a buyer. Jeff Campbell, what say you? Well, we hope they go higher in the future. Isn't that what we hope real estate does, ultimately? Uh, all love, no hostility. Here, here is what I give to you. KPBS recently said that San Diego County was number six in the nation for the highest rental rates for a two-bedroom rental in San Diego. Can you imagine paying $2,200, $2,600 a month for rent? You see, let's take the focus on on affordability based on what the rentals are, not what the purchase properties are, because San Diego County um, also has over 200 properties that are two bedrooms and greater for sale today. $200,000 and less, all right? $200,000 and less. So if we think about it, what's the mortgage, what's the P-I-T-I-H-O-A on that? Yeah. All right, so uh, if you put 25,000 down, 10% or uh, thereabouts, including closing costs, 45,000 down on 20% down, you have to save a little bit of money and you have to have good credit. If you do that and have a great job here in San Diego County, you can afford to buy. And two bedrooms, minimum two bedrooms, that's going to run around 2100, 2400 before tax savings. Right. All right. Now, if rentals for a two bedroom are 24, 2600, all right, mm -hmm. it absolutely makes sense to be a home buyer. So we are the furthest away from unaffordability we are affordable you have to make sure that you have decent credit save a little bit of money and you can be a home buyer okay. so absolutely with great love to you not hostility oh, bring we the are hostility. affordable bring the hostility. we are affordable. come on tell him he's saying it's an affordable marketplace dale what do you think well i think i think right now what what really draws people into buying is is what jeff's saying about the what, what they're paying now for renting a property i mean that those rents are going up yep and right now, interest rates are really low. I think everybody has like a almost like interest rate lag or something. They're feeling like it's like they're 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 they, they don't realize how low it really is, you know. And you almost feel like oh, four percent. It's always four percent. It's not always going to be four percent. And right now, you're getting these rates that are so low. You're in the fours. You're sub four on some pro programs. You're not going to get that all the time. So buying right now is a great time. Um, you know, if rates go up. A percent you're gonna lose buying power yeah you know but you're not gonna lose the properties aren't gonna go down in value if it goes up a percent or two percent so if, if values are gonna stay and you're just gonna lose buying power I feel like today would be the time to do it makes sense Erica I agree with both Jeff and Dale mm -hmm. I have a little bit of love and a little bit of hostility <laughs> um, 
You know, right. when, when, when clients come to me, should I sell, is now a good time to sell, or buyers come to me, is now a good time to buy, or should I wait six months? I tell them, let me check my crystal ball. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't, we don't know what the market's gonna bear uh, in six months from now or in a year from now. Sure. And what I tell them is, if you're ready to sell now for whatever reason, a new job, um, a bigger home, downsizing, then let's put the home on the market and let's sell it now. And I, I definitely am not saying, everyone sell your houses, do it now, do it quickly. That's not what I'm saying. What right. I'm saying is if you are a home seller, then it's a good time. So well, you know, to be a think about because it. Was, price, your, was that your Arnold price price price? Price? <laughs> <laughs> it was a it, it was a scary one. I don't know what it was. Yeah. W when have you it's ever heard? Power. When have you ever heard a professional salesperson not say it's time to buy? Mm -hmm. In any sales realm, a professional salesperson. If you come onto my automobile lot, if you come into my open house now is the time to buy. I'm there to perform a job and that is to sell the sell my inventory and sell what I have now. So I think that's a different question. Mm -hmm. um, really, w but but it's okay to talk about it that, you know, we'll sure. go on different branches on sure. this tree. Mm -hmm. right. But but the thing here is, is that if, if, uh, if you're working with a professional, a professional is going to find a way to help you better your position, get in the school district you want to get into, get into that home with the pool, and uh, whether it's the property that they're representing or another property, if they're honoring their fiduciary, the, now is, we don't know what tomorrow is, like Erica was saying, but I know what today is, right. and today's a good time to buy. Okay. Well, buying right. in your means is always, is, it creates stability for your family, creates uh, you know, owning a home, all those things are such a positive impact on the community as well. Yeah. And I disagree a little bit with Jeff because th that's not how I personally do business. I don't, you know, once again, I still like to sit down with, you know, both my buyers and sellers and I like to figure out goals. I'm a huge goal person. We have vision boards that we do and quarterly we look through our personal goals and our professional goals. So. That's kind of a little bit more how I do business as far as, you know, what would you like to do? What would you like to see one year, five year, 10, 15 from now? And so, you know, I hate to say it, but now isn't always the time to buy and sell. It really, I'm gonna go back over and over that it really depends on your goal and your expectation and what you would like to see out of your life. And, and when I put myself in your shoes, uh, I, I understand and, and adopt the, the consultation portion of this business. I can never go take a listing and not explain to my seller, I am, you know what, to the walls on selling your home. <laughs> I am going to pull out all stops because everybody who asks if they should buy your home, I am going to say yes. However, of course, we have to make sure it's within their means and I don't think that any professional will, will overextend a client or do something that would not be in their overall best interest. Right. Okay. Well, it's situational. That's what it comes down to. Every, per every body has a different situation, timeline, goals, with what they are, or do they have a family now? Are they gonna have a family in the future? So what makes sense for them at that time? Maybe renting for another year, saving up more money, and then buying a home in a year from now? We don't know what interest rates are gonna be like. We don't know what the market's gonna be doing then, but it's never good to overextend yourself. So it's, it's situational, and that's why we do the consultations with the clients to see if buying is right now, or selling is right now, or should we wait? And, and just to be clear, you know, what I'm saying is that um, you could still buy real estate today and make money on it 20 mm -hmm. years from now, 10 mm -hmm. years from now, five years from now, you may. I'm just saying that it's not as good a time to be a buyer as a seller because sellers right now, people who've owned homes for the last three, four, five plus years, they've got equity. Mm -hmm. But they that's are, not correct. Are, it is a good are, time to buy right it, it, now. Well, I'm completely, it's not, totally. It's not as good of a time to buy as it is to sell. You have to make it your market. There is you have to. You make situation. it your market. Is uh, have you ever heard people say it's a buyer's market or it's a seller's market? Yet have you in 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 a buyer's market have you had people sell? Right. Well, it's you got to make the market for your client. Yeah, every transaction there's a buyer and seller. No question right. about that. You can't you can't get away from that. Once again, I'm going to go back to stats. If you look at historic data, then we're still at 10 percent below below the peak of 2005. So right now, um, if you the way that the trends work is, you know, you'll, you'll see, 
you'll see the, the timeline, I'm sorry, not the timelines, but prices will go up and down and they'll divot, but they never go lower than the last historic um, peak. Hmm. So we're still 10% below 2005, 2006 peak right okay. now. So what does that so mean? Do you, does that mean everybody has to wait? I don't think that means it's anything. No, I'm not saying anyone should wait. If it's the right time and it's the, the right thing for you to do for your family, yeah. go ahead and buy. I'm just telling you, it's not a great time to buy. A great time to buy was 2010. A great time to buy was 2011. It is a great time, time to, to buy, buy though. 2012. It's a great yes. time right, right now. Those were great oh times. my golly. Those were great times to <laughs> buy. But those were a great time <laughs> to buy because 2020. we were in a short yeah. sell market. Yes, and if you exactly. bought in 2012, 2011, you have a lot of equity in your house right now so when you say is it a good time to sell and a good time to buy you're gonna make it you're gonna make profit on the sale side of your property but you might have to pay a little bit more on the buy side to get into something but chances are you're you have so much equity in that property already that you're that's more that's your down payment on a bigger home and interest rates are still lower now than they were uh, or about the same uh, you know a couple years ago so you're gonna make money but you're gonna pay a little bit more for the, for the property now. So it's, it's again, going over your right. goals. What's important to you? How much money am I gonna make? How much can I afford on the buy side? Appreciate all of your input, fantastic okay. stuff. Thank you all for being here, really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching The Real Estate Debate. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. Our next guest is a psychology professor and spiritual leader here in San Diego. Please welcome back to the show, my good friend Aisha Sunesha is here. Aisha, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Wow, I can't believe it's been two months since we've had the chance to chat here. Um, a lot's changed in a couple months. It has. Thanks so much for having me back. Yeah, it's great to have you now. Um, today, our topic is around ego. Yes. Uh, and I think a lot of times people when they hear the word ego, they think like Donald Trump or like, you know, <laughs> someone who has a big ego, you sure. know, this guy, oh, he's all ego. But it's not quite that, right? Right. What is the ego? So that's a great question. Um, I think one of the things we can talk about is the ego versus soul consciousness, right? Okay. So the ego is kind of this conditioned self, this part of our personality, the part of um, our conditioning that we start to see as ourselves, as our own identity. And I think a great question is, how close is that to our true identity? Mm -hmm. So if I was to ask you, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Your ego would probably step in and you would say something like this. You would say, this is my name, this is my gender, this is my, perhaps my um, religion or my ethnicity, my cultural background. You might even talk about your education or your occupation or the roles that you play, right. even the possessions that you have. That is all what we would consider our ego. Our egos form this very conditioned identity of who we are. For the most part, the ego should play a very small role in our existence mm -hmm. and I think what is happening is that it's playing a very big role. Mm. And when we say ego, we say, well, focused on yourself. Anytime you say, I need, I want, right? That's something that's uh, originating from the ego. Very Whereas true. if you say something like, hey, I wanna make sure everyone's comfortable, should we turn the AC down or something like that, mm different origination point for something like that. Would you agree with that? Ego does serve a purpose. The ego's purpose is to perceive the world. And so we allow it to perceive the world. We don't, however, allow it to make decisions for us. There you go. So we can have the perception through the ego, and then we can choose to have decision making from our higher self, or from what we call that soul consciousness. Right. And the problem really with the ego is that when I was describing you or myself and describing my gender or my social status or my possessions or my race, my ethnicity. The problem with that is that that differentiates me from you, mm. which separates me from you. Right. And then that, from that perspective, I could say, you know, you might be better than me or taller than me or richer than me or smarter than me. So there's this differentiation and this separateness that comes from the ego. The ego's main objective is to separate, is to see itself as an individual. It it's lives in the past and in the future. Soul consciousness, however, lives right here in the present. 
And when I see myself as a soul, I, I see my identity as a very, from a very different place. If I really asked myself, who am I? And that's the big question, right? Really, who am I? The answer would be, I am a soul. And not just a soul, but a beautiful, peaceful, powerful soul. And when I see myself from that perspective, then I see you and I see everybody else as a beautiful, peaceful, powerful soul. So there is no differentiation. There is no discrimination. There is no anger or hatred or, or separateness. And let's use some really simple examples. Uh, if you're standing in line, let's say, uh, somewhere, it could mm -hmm. be anywhere, the DMV, to get something to eat, and someone cuts in front of you. Mm -hmm. And maybe they did it and they didn't mean to do it. Or maybe they did do it on purpose. Maybe they saw you and you saw them look at you and they still just kind of nudged in front of you. Immediately, that heart racing mm -hmm. feeling that you're getting is your ego saying, this person thinks I'm not important. Right. And all of a sudden you have your ego telling you, you are important, you are important, you need to do something about this. You need to be angry about this. And it just starts flushing you with all of this, uh, all these different chemicals mm -hmm. in your brain. But if you have um, some awareness, some conscious awareness, you can actually take a moment and go, all right, that's just the ego. It's fine. If this guy really wants to be in front of me, one place in front of me in line, he can have it. Sure. Because it's bigger than that. Life right. is bigger than this one little instance. Right. And that's where the ego, I think, really gets to us on a daily basis is all those little things that we blow way out of proportion. Mm -hmm. I mean, way out of proportion. I've seen people go off on other people for some of the smallest things. Imagine the, all the things that happen in traffic in San Diego on a daily basis. People going crazy, honking their horns, yelling at other people. That's not your soul that you're hearing from there. Well, you're absolutely right because your soul has a very different vibrational frequency. Mm. And you can always tell from your body what emotional state you're in, right? Your emotions are really very easily accessible in your body. So you were talking about whether it be anger or frustration or even anxiety. Those are very low level vibrational frequency emotions that are filtered only through the ego. So what is mm. the main emotion of the ego is fear. Right. And whatever is related to fear, anger, anxiety, uh, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, competition. And the soul's vibrational frequency is that of love. And whatever is related to love, whether it be compassion, kindness, openness, non-judgment, receiving, allowing, manifesting, creating. All of that is a vibrational frequency of, of love, which is from the soul. So whatever you're feeling in your body, you always know whether you're vibrating from the ego because of the emotional state that you're carrying, or whether you're vibrating from your soul, which is a much higher level of vibrational frequency. Love, peace, joy. Yeah, and the, and the borders, the boundaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, the soul's boundless. Whenever you feel fearless, whenever you feel like taking on mm -hmm. a, a challenge or doing something new or doing something you've, you've never done or even dreamed that you would be able to do, uh, versus constantly telling yourself, I can't. I agree. I think the biggest step really is self-awareness. Um, tapping into your body, knowing the emotional state that you're in. And then, you know, thinking about how much we, you talked a little bit about change, right? We don't want things to change. The ego wants things to stay consistent. Right. Its survival depends on us staying consistent. And our soul thrives on change and openness and creation. So there are two very big conflicting messages going on. But if we stay aware and realize that the ego is not here to really control us. We spend a lot of energy and a lot of time trying to control others. And if we could use that same energy trying to manage or control or even change ourselves, can you imagine the difference we'd make in the world? Fantastic stuff from Aisha Sunesha. Thank you so much for being here today. I really My appreciate pleasure. your time. You're an amazing flower. I love to see you blossom every time you come on the show. Stick around Thank for you, more Derek. Smarter San Diego TV where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. Our next guest is the host of Big Daddy Radio. Please welcome back to the show, Brian Garrity, Big Daddy himself. What's up, Brian? Hey, how's it going, bud? Well, 
dude, it's the socks. I know. I said, you need to have a sock cam for this show. <laughs> Where is it? I want to know. I know my socks win. Seriously. Because that's what it, that's what everyone seemed to care about last they time like you were on the show. They like my leg and my socks. <laughs> I didn't know that my leg could garner so much attention. My goodness. It Your got leg. a life of its own, it was, actually. Was, have you named the leg yet? Because Not yet. I think, are, like, we don't need to be Does it have a parts. Facebook page? <laughs> there you go. That's what we could have done. <laughs> then the haters that are going to hate can hate, and then the rest can lie. Because you know haters are going to hate, regardless. Right. Yeah. Well, the dislike button's coming for them, so we'll just see, uh, yeah. we'll see yeah, how yeah, that yeah. goes. One more thing for everybody's self-confidence. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's, a great, it's a great idea, Facebook. Great idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so today, North okay. Park, North 92104. Park. I got, yes. I got questions for you. You're drilling down. I'm going to drill, drill down I'm on top of it. Drill go down. on, drill down, baby. Okay. A, okay. But now you got the zip code down. Here I go. Okay, I got okay. the zip code now right. You drilled that one. Now, you're a Metro real estate expert, top producer for years. Um, you've been hosting your radio show, very popular. Um, you guys talk about a lot of stuff. A oh. lot of people are paying attention. Um, I like to ask you about the real estate stuff first, and then we'll talk about the show. Yes. So, I see what's happening in North Park, 92104, even some of the surrounding other metro areas, but specifically in North Park is exploding. It's booming. Booming. But when you see a place booming, you always wonder, is are we at the end of the boom or are we still in the expansive part of the boom? So here's my question for you. People who might be home sellers in the next two to three years who own in North Park, 92104, should they be thinking about a strategy to exit? Should they be think, considering selling now because we might be at the end of that boom or thinking of something else, a different strategy? Well, you know how people are worried about a bubble. Right. Well, let's talk about North Park specifically, right? Yes. So is the bubble going to burst? I would say at this point it's frothy. Okay. Okay, it's frothy. Okay. So I maybe change my opinion a little bit, but um, you know, because the incomes can't keep up with these values. At some point, it, that, it, that eventually it will burst if, if things don't kind of like start to slow down a little bit. So if you're an owner, in North Park, where it's hustling and bustling, restaurants are coming on board left and right. You can basically live your whole life within the confines of your residence, which is pretty freaking cool. It's amazing. They have amazing schools like Albert Einstein, which is a charter school, borders on South Park, but who cares? At, at that point, we're just talking, you know, apples and oranges. Um, the which they offer German immersion for these kids. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty amazing. Like, so you're talking about people want to live in North Park. So if you're a homeowner that's had this, this house and mm -hmm. you've got these, these schools that offer, they're teaching first graders their first week is in German. I'm yeah. like, how do they know how to speak that? It's crazy. So it is, it is. It's <laughs> a very top rated school and they do really great things. So don't get me wrong. Albert Einstein Academy is an amazing school in North Park. It is. So, North Park. but as the, um, for North Park, considering the growth. If you're a seller, what real estate agent wouldn't say like, oh yeah, it's list your house for sale. It feels very self-serving to say that. But I would say it's not right for everyone to sell, but if you're at, we're at top of the market, we're at frothy. We're at frothy. We really, we're at frothy. Maybe not the top, so not top. not top, top, but we're, frothy. It's, it's getting frothy. I'm sorry. It's like, it's, how long can this continue? You know, it's that, that's what always makes me nervous for people when they, you, you start pushing it and the values start becoming artificial and people, you're creating this demand because inventory is low. We're seeing a consistent 11% increase in appreciation. Um, and it's, it's ridiculous. So yes, for some people, it would make sense to like throw a sign up there, do a great marketing plan. We'll get you top dollar for your house and sell it. But you've got to have an exit plan if you're going to do that. You don't just sell your house because you're going to make a bunch of money. Or maybe you do. Maybe you sell your house because I, you want to bank three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars I'm saying. I don't know. It depends I'm just on. Saying. Just saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. It is last individual. Time, there were a lot of people who wished they had rang the register and took those those tax free profits. Oh yeah, you absolutely. Know? And here we are. If you say it's frothy, I'm saying just. I'm just saying. Think right. about it. So think this, about it. I agree. And but I'm just saying though, as a real estate agent, what I do with the clients is sit down one on one and. I will actually walk away from a listing before I would push somebody that I don't feel is ready or, or that somebody thinks they can get more than what you really can get for the house. Look, I'll get you top dollar for your house all day long. I'm not worried about that part. But is it appropriate? Is it an appropriate time for you to sell? Do you have an exit plan? When you exit, what are you going to do? Maybe some people are ready. Kids are going off to college. They just want to put some bank away and maybe they want to rent. Maybe it makes sense for you to do a vacation rental by owner. 
I was going to talk about that, but to be honest, it's such a, it's so outrageous that to sell your house and for you to exit and just go into the rental market, it's like, you better be making a really tidy profit. Yeah. If that's what you're going to do. Because otherwise it doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable telling someone sell and just rent and wait it out because who knows how long you're going to be waiting. And I don't think what people saw in 06 or 07, depending on who you are, who you're talking to, when the explosion or implosion actually happened, that's an implosion of a lifetime. We're not going to see that happen again. Right. So I think why I say it's frothy, we have to get back to where is the traditional cyclical real estate market, Trend that life. seven to 10 year market phase. When, when do we get back there? We will get back there. History is telling us it, as far back as real estate goes, seven to 10 years is the regular cycle. It could Other be just the, a couple years from now. It could be, depending on what your benchmark is for measuring it or the economy. The way that salaries aren't keeping up with the cost of these houses. And see, I have people come to me, I have sellers that will be, I want to list my house for a million dollars. That would have been an outlandish proposition to think you were going to spend 900000 or a million dollars for a house in North Park. There was a time when I, I know people would have been sitting here like this, having a conversation and saying, that's never going to happen. Yeah, sure. It's here. Oh, it's here. It's happened. It's happened and it's I mean, the houses over there, if your house is in good shape, I mean, there's all kinds of things we talk about, but it's one of those things where you, if you're going to list it and you want top dollar, we can do that. But I want to make sure you have an exit plan that makes sense because I think that that's where people fall short. Hey, tell, tell us what, good thing. what's up with the radio show? What's going on with we Big Daddy? We love Big Daddy Radio. Everybody Every loves Wednesday, Big Daddy Radio. I know. Yeah, hey, I Everybody loves that. it. That's very sweet. But Wednesday is 2 o'clock, ESPN, we, can, we stream live. So you can go to BigDaddyRadio.com and you can listen live, which we have the link all set up for people. It has past shows on there. People go on. But we've developed it into a very much like a view or a talk or a chew. It, it's just evolved into a panel discussion. Obviously, I am the host of the show. Right. Sounds very egocentric, very ego-driven. It's not, though. It is. You have a panel. Because I have a panel and I certainly don't hold back on sharing any parts of my life. So the radio show is something that I do. It started out to be about real estate and I was like, it's just turned into this pop culture explosion. We have great guests like Belinda Carlisle from the Go-Go, Sandra Bernhardt, Million Dollar Listing, a lot of Bravo celebrities on, they have called in Bravo. friends of the show. Yeah, I mean, and you know, that's my thing. I love it. Are you kidding? <laughs> All day long, I'll take it. So people wonder like, well, what does the real estate and the show, how do those two things interact in your life? It's like. I look at that radio show as if you really want to know your agent, really want to know your agent, you're not going to find any agent that you're going to get to know. And I treat all my clients like family eventually anyways, because to say that all clients are like family right off the get go is very fake. I don't believe that. I believe you need to develop the relationship. Now, people that are coming in that are a warm referral or, you know, from someone, you know, or people that are like family, that's different. But people that are coming that are referred to you, you've got to get to know them. Sure. And generally speaking, I don't want to work with somebody that doesn't want to work with me. And I think that comes out in the very first meeting when you're meeting with somebody. I want to work with people that I know I can get them top dollar. They're pragmatic and realistic about what their house can sell for. And they like the radio show. <laughs> the radio show will give you. If you want to know where I stand or what I do, you can go You like the radio listen. show. It's fun. I love <laughs> it's it. It's a I love it. You got to have BG, And the people do. Thank you so much for coming in today. Of course. Really thank appreciate you. your time. Always. That's Big Daddy Brian Garrity. Check out Big Daddy Radio Wednesdays, 2 to 3 p.m. on ESPN 1700. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. Commercial free. <laughs>
let's create a little history of what's gone down in the convention center. And I don't think the public has a good understanding of it. The, there's a need to expand the convention center, which everybody agrees upon, because Comic-Con has reached a point where it just can't grow any bigger. True. And if you don't create a larger space for them, they can threaten, like the Chargers, to move to another city that's going to accommodate their needs. So yeah. for a long time, there's been an effort to expand the convention center. And the hoteliers invested six years and lost $10 million to do a contiguous expansion. And contiguous. So that's no longer happening, that expansion well, that they talked about? Well, that's what they're still striving for. But okay. we need to understand why it's not going to happen. A contiguous expansion simply means connected to the existing facility. Okay. And if you were to expand contiguously at the con current convention center site, you would then block the public's access to the bay. Now, we have a legal right to access the bay. That was left to us in trust. So the hoteliers, this was an inconvenient truth for them. So they went on a campaign that says the only way in San Diego that we can expand the convention center is through a contiguous expansion. And they got the Coastal Commission to give them the rubber stamp on that, which they needed in order to be able to do a contiguous expansion. So that right now is being fought in court by Corey Briggs, and he's likely going uh, to win that case, which will prohibit a contiguous expansion because we now know there are alternatives to contiguous expansion and if you have a viable alternative to contiguous you have to go with that because of the public's right away to the the bay access okay so it starts with comic-con the hoteliers meaning the big hotel <laughs> lobby okay, right yeah. right who want the expansion they don't they're not concerned necessarily about the public's access to the bay right um, they want the expansion because it's going to be good for their business but they're probably going to lose. Correct. And that is somehow connected to what's going on with the Chargers and the whole stadium deal? It is. So they already lost one legal battle that was pretty significant. I don't know if you remember a couple years back, it looked like we were going to expand the convention center. Yeah. And that was after the Coastal Commission did their stamp of approval for a contiguous expansion, but they still needed a way to fund it. And they decided with, to fund it by raising the TOT tax, the money right. out of towners pay to stay in the hotels, one to three percent based on where the hotels were in location of the convention center. So if the okay. hotel was right there, it'd be a three percent hike. Out here in Sereno Valley, it'd be you know a one percent hike. But they didn't trust the public to approve that, so they disenfranchised the voters. And Mayor Faulkner, then Councilman Faulkner, voted for this that they would allow the hoteliers to vote on their own tax increase. And at that time, the Chargers and other citizens groups said, hey, this is unconstitutional to raise this tax without the city council voting on it or the public voting on it. You can't let the hoteliers raise their own tax. And they said, oh, no, no, we can do that. Well, Corey Briggs took them to court and, they, and beat them. That it was proven unconstitutional. Three judge panel unanimously voted it's unconstitutional. The ruling was so strong, the hoteliers decided not even appeal to a higher level in the courses. So that's where the funding went away. Interesting. So, so we're now back to fall of last year. The Chargers came to Mayor Faulkner with the same plan they came with, with, uh, to Sanders with, saying, let's expand the convention center non-contiguously. We can combine the stadium and the convention center with a multi-use facility that will provide 240,000 square feet of convention space and it'll also provide a stadium, and that would cost $1.2 billion. So the Chargers brought this to the mayor? Correct, okay. yes, and the mayor, when you've talked about the mayor and the Chargers having beers in La Jolla, this is what they were, were talking about. Okay. So the mayor couldn't get the hoteliers on board with this plan, so what he did is created the Citizen Stadium Advisory Group, which is CSAG, and this really, did two things. It created the illusion that there was choice between downtown and Mission Valley, and it provided political cover for the mayor if a deal could not be worked out in Mission Valley. And when I say that it created an illusion, I'm saying this based on sitting down in a meeting with members of, of CSAG and going, why not downtown. What are the obstacles of downtown? Because I know the obstacles of Mission Valley and I have a laundry list of them right so, here. So you think the mayor did all this on purpose. Basically what you're saying is that there's some sort of 
conspiracy, if you will, or what, what is he conspiring? In other words, what is, why wouldn't the mayor want to go with the Chargers idea? Because if you were to go, I would invite everybody listening here to go to a new website called Hotelier Cabal, which was launched by former Mayor Faulkner supporter, George, George Mullen. Uh, he's a businessman downtown, uh, downtown and, and an artist. And George Mullen does a very fine job of showing all the things that the hoteliers have goofed up in the city over the last few years with the power that they have. He also, with public records, shows the amount of money that is, they have donated to Faulkner campaigns going back over multiple years. So Faulkner is very much tied to the hoteliers in terms of being able huh. to please what, you know, it's really you know, about four, four or five big hotel, and not every single hotelier is a why, bad guy. Why do the hoteliers care about whether it's a contiguous expansion or uh, a non-contiguous expansion? Well, why do they care? They, there's two answers to that. One is that they believe it's going to best suit uh, their guests coming, to, that their guests would prefer a contiguous expansion. So they want something that's going to best please the conventioneers. Okay. The other thing they have voiced is there's a concern that conventions tend to book out years in advance. And an NFL schedule will come out six months ahead of time. Mm. So there does create a conflict with the new facility for booking long-term conventions. But what you need to keep in mind is that we would still have the existing convention space, which would never be in conflict with the, the new, with a, a stadium downtown. So, and only the largest conventions like Comic-Con would actually use both facilities, if that, you know, makes sense. And that doesn't conflict with, with the NFL schedule it at all. It does make sense. I'm just having a hard time figuging out why the hoteliers would want to go this way, why they would care so vehemently. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I had uh, Tony Manolato on do, the yes. show. Um, not too long ago. I believe he's a part of that advisory group, um, the he's state the, advisory he, group. He's the, the spokesman for it. He's the spokesman for the advisory group. And he said that um, that the city did put, you know, a, a, a plan in front of the Chargers and that the Chargers walked away from the table. You, you're saying that's no, not what, what happened? No, what he's, what he's proposed is that the city has told the Chargers, hey, we'll talk about downtown if you sign a seven-year extension that locks you to Mission Valley in the meantime. We're not, you don't have to sign that extension for you to talk about Mission Valley, only for downtown. Mm. Now, if the Chargers were to sign that seven-year extension, then the Mayor Faulkner can jump up and down and say, hey, I, I've saved the Chargers and I've passed the buck on to <laughs> somebody else and they're here for another seven years and the Chargers will have lost their leverage to get something done in the meantime. So they're, in, in order, I'm just saying, forget the seven-year extension, just negotiate downtown because it's considerably cheaper and it brings the charges to the table. One of the big lies that has been told to the citizens of San Diego is that Mission Valley would be a cheaper choice for downtown and that's certainly not the case at all. Right now, and I don't think you could do it, they're saying it would cost 1.1 billion to build a new stadium in Mission Valley. Remember my number of 1.2 billion to do a stadium and convention center downtown. Mm. The city already released a new cost estimates for a contiguous expansion, and they put that at $550 million. So if you have the $1.1 billion saying you could do it for that downtown, and then add the $550 million to expand the convention center separately, you're at nearly half a billion dollars more to be able to do these projects apart than as if you were to combine them and do them together downtown. Fantastic stuff. Dan McClellan, thank you so much for coming in today, man. Really appreciate your time. A different take on the whole Chargers Stadium debacle. Really appreciate insight from Dan McClellan. He is the sports renegade <laughs> here in San Diego. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else commercial free. Our next guest is the Smarter San Diego Community Connection in Encinitas. Please welcome to the show for the first time, Michael Jacobo is here. What's up, Michael? How are you, sir? Doing, doing great, man. 
Thank Great you very much you. for having me. Encinitas, one of my favorite places in San Diego. I love talking about Encinitas. I think one of the things that most people don't know about Encinitas is how many different sub-communities there are. Can we talk about those? Absolutely. So Encinitas is obviously very big. Um, it takes up about six miles of coastline in North County. Mm -hmm. um, the communities within Encinitas, it's actually comprised of two different zip codes. A lot of people aren't aware about that. Obviously, 92024 is the main zip code there. And then you also have 92007, um, which is Cardiff. Cardiff by the Sea, a small, quaint community, which is and one that's of part of Encinitas. Part of Encinitas. I think most people thought Cardiff was just Cardiff. Yeah, <laughs> and just, a lot of people don't it's realize. Cardiff. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the most southern port, uh, portion of Encinitas. Interesting. Um, you also have what's known as Old Encinitas, which is the downtown area, right. 101. Uh, where big nightlife is, um, bars, restaurants, uh, beautiful beaches, Moonlight Beach there. The 101 Beacons Diner. Beach. Exactly. That's you got to check out the 101 Diner. <laughs> that's one of them. There's, there's, there's actually a lot of them out there that yeah. uh, you could try out. You could, you could do that for a long time. No kidding. And then um, as you move up the coast, you also have Lucadia, which is another uh, small, quaint community of Encinitas. Um, Going east, going inland, up Lucadia Boulevard, if you will, there is what's called New Encinitas, which is El Camino Real, a lot of the shopping there. Um, and then even going more east on that is you have Olivenhain. Yeah. Olivenhain is a very unique pro um, area of Encinitas because of its more equestrian, large lots, more rural. Um, you're getting away from the beach town, beach city of uh, Encinitas, and you're going more three-acre parcels, two-acre parcels. Um, horse property. Horse property, horse yeah, trails. It's crazy. It's beautiful out there. You know what's nutty to me about that is that um, when people talk about buying million-dollar houses, and there's a lot of places you can buy a million-dollar house in San Diego, okay? Absolutely. One of the places I think you have to look, you got to consider Alivanine. Uh, because over there, people are buying you know, for 1.2, 1.3 million huge houses yep. on huge lots in Encinitas. I mean, yep. it's, it's still Encinitas. So you get all the great school districts. You had the, you know, what are your five miles the most or something like that from, uh, from the water? Exactly. You're exactly. You're only five miles away from the ocean. Um, and you are considered rural. Yeah, there. <laughs> which which is crazy, right? But um, it is. It's 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 amazing. It's quiet. Um, great school districts, have, as you mentioned. Yeah, Lucadia too. Uh, someone that I know who's a real estate investor. He told me, Lucadia, mm -hmm. that's the place where there's going to be big big profit over the course of the next few years. I don't know why. He wouldn't tell me why. I don't know if there's some secret deal going on over there or if it's just catching some momentum, but Lucadia, he said specifically, that's the one, that's the place where you can make a bunch of money right now. Lucadia is, is another one. I mean, I think Cardiff is another one. Mm -hmm. um, both places, there are some new construction that's happening in and around Lucadia, uh, which you don't see a whole lot of in Encinitas. There's not a lot of construction or new homes being built in the area. Um, but I could see that. It, it's uh, a lot of people don't know about Lucadia. Yeah. Um, you know, it borders South Carlsbad. Um, it borders okay. um, the, the uh, Batiquitos Lagoon there. Um, it's west of the Five Freeway, walking distance to some of the best beaches, Beacons Beach. Um, right down the street is Moonlight Beach. Uh, some of the best surfing there. So Jay, did you hear that? Surfing. You got a great surfing. Lucadia, <laughs> in case you didn't know. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's known as the top three um, beach cities in California. Lucadia is? Um, Encinitas. Encinitas, mm -hmm. one of the top three beach cities in California. Enc yep, one that doesn't surprise me too much. Ha I mean, we know the market in San Diego j County, just in general, has been doing really, really well, you know, in the past four or five years. How specifically is Encinitas and some of these other areas within Encinitas doing? Encinitas is doing phenomenal. Um, very, very well. Uh, it's, it's, there's not a whole lot of properties available on the market right now. We have a total of 246 homes on the market um, wow. and less than two month inventory. Okay. So it's hot. It is, it is extremely hot right now. 
Do you think that there's any particular one of those five areas of Encinitas that we talked about that has been hotter or colder than the other? Um, I, I'd like to say that Cardiff is a pretty hot property, you know, probably hot area right now. Um, Cardiff is very much beach oriented, beach town, beach community, uh, small. One of the um, nice things about Cardiff is in Encinitas as a whole, your average um, median price range is about 800000 and Cardiff is one of the few communities of, of Encinitas where you could purchase, get in, get into as low as 450000 And it's a beach community. And it's a beach community. Wow, that, sound, that sounds like a, an amazing opportunity. Absolutely is. I mean, obviously you have your $3 million properties there as well, upwards up to $3 million plus, but you can get in as low as 450000 in Cardiff. Wow, seriously? Where's that house? <laughs> show, show us that one. <laughs> Only a, a mile, and a mile and a half away from the ocean. Is that right? Yes. Wow. So Cardiff is the sounds to me like that's really the sort of uh, unknown gem, right? Because I've got investors telling me about Locadia. Everyone knows about Encinitas. I mean, Levenhain. If you're looking for horse property, um, you know, you got to look in Levenhain. Yeah. Unless you're okay with just being, you know. 40 miles away and go to Ramona and you know be up on the mountain if you want to do that go th go there right but if you want to be somewhat centrally located if you want to be somewhat near you know the beach you should really take a look at Liebenheim but it sounds to me like beach areas because we already know the PBs and Mission Beaches and all that stuff is just you know this, yeah. there's nothing affordable there but it sounds like Cardiff is different Cardiff is different um, another great thing about Encinitas is I mean you have your local you have your own you have your own um, golf course there some of the holes from Encinitas Ranch Golf Course, you have ocean views. Um, it's great. I love Encinitas. I could talk about Encinitas all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish we had all day to talk about it. I right, really do. Right. But I think that, you know, what we learned today from you is that, you know, highlighting Cardiff as a place to keep on the radar, um, highlighting um, Alevenhain. A, a reminder to everyone out there who's a horse property buff or someone who just wants property. Yep. I mean, if you just want more than just a yard, a postage stamp yard, if you just want, maybe you don't want to have horses. Maybe it's not an equestrian thing for you. Maybe it's more of a, you know, we just we want to have an acre or an acre and a half. You can find those properties. You could get it there. Just Absolutely. over a million bucks, too. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's one of the best deals when you talk about what you're buying, not just uh, price per square foot of the house, yep. but price per square foot of the land. When you factor that in, I still think Levenhine has some of the best deals in all San Diego. I would have to agree with you, <laughs> absolutely, for what you're getting. Right, exactly. Right. For what you're getting, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, a fantastic value when you look at Encinitas. Michael, thank you so much for coming in today. Really appreciate your My time. My pleasure. Fantastic thank you very much stuff. for having me, Derek. Hi, I'm Michael Jacobo with Jacobo Realty Group at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. If you're looking to buy or sell in Encinitas, please feel free to give us a call. We'd love the opportunity to help you out. Thank you. Hey, great show, guys. That's a wrap. Jade, uh, what's your schedule look like? Am I breaking down the set? Uh, not today, Derek. I'd love to, but there's waves out there. I gotta go. Angela? Nikki? Uh, yeah, I gotta go beat traffic. And I think Nikki's making something up there. Look at this. We did this. We did all of this.